Hi, everybody. How is this working? Is Andy presenting or? Yes. Awesome presentation. Oh, no worries, Eric. Uh, and folks, again, uh, a round of applause for the UCSF presentation. And uh, for the UCSF presenters, uh, uh, if there are a few questions actually uh, from the audience. So if you can answer them uh, via, via the chat, that'll be great. But please, um, Eric, whenever you're ready um, uh, with the slides, let's get started. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, glad to be here. Thank you so much for that super awesome presentation, UCSF. Super exciting. I can only hope that we're training students that might get to work in your lab someday. Um, and if you have any good op 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 openings for aspiring undergrads, talk to Anthony. He has a great way uh, to connect awesome undergrads that might be interested in working on your teams. Uh, my name's Eric. I work uh, doing multiple things at UC Berkeley. I do outreach. I also work with the tech team that provides our campus uh, Jupiter Hub. I work with data science undergraduate studies, the part of UC Berkeley that's leading a new initiatives that undergrad students can study data science. Uh, we think we're sort of like one of the foremost efforts in the country. I'm here with my colleague, Anthony, who's a longtime, could I say, founding member of this meetup? Would that be fair to say? Um, Whatever you like, Eric. <laughs> Uh, Anthony's been around before me, been part of this effort, uh, and so he's, uh, with humility, letting me give the lead on this. Uh, and then we also have a student, Ksenia, who I think is joining uh, via the telephone. Uh, she is somebody who works with me closely on many of our efforts, and I'll bring her at the end to talk about um, some of the efforts we do to work with GCP off of campus. So what is this thing? We have a campus-wide Jupiter Hub for teaching that's run on GCP. It's scalable, so it can go from a few users to thousands of users. A lot of this is how do you use Google, Google Kubernetes engine to make things really scalable and how do you scale really efficiently? Um, if you're interested in any of this, I've learned a lot from the team that we work with that do everything in an open DevOps style. So you can go and like study everything about their deployment, learn, you know, see their Helm chart, see every, how everything is managed. All the infrastructure is sort of like publicly published and, and uh, there's, you know, GitHubs that like sort of document all of the things. They also create documentation for other universities to reproduce what we're doing. So I've learned a lot from this team about like sort of open science and open processes. The way it works at UC Berkeley is an idea of guardrails, not gates. Instead of setting up a Jupyter Hub for each individual class, there's a single Jupyter Hub that everybody at UC Berkeley can log into using their Berkeley ID. So you go and you use the same thing you log into for all of the rest of your campus services, and you're launched into a little virtual machine with a Jupyter Hub server. You can have our studio in there. Uh, you can have R, Jupyter, like there's multiple things you can do with this little bit of compute in your little server and you have like a persistent amount of storage. So students throughout the time that they're students can sort of collect some of their assignments in this persistent storage there. So what I want to talk about today is like working, and this has been running on Google Cloud, I'd say for about four years now since I've been part of the project. Um, what does it mean when we can make some compute, a small amount of compute, uh, ubiquitous to all, every learner, free to everyone, like it's just like you're accessing any other campus service and frictionless to get to like, you know, pretty, pretty awesome data science toolkit. So this is what our, you know, uh, users look like over the course of the semester, uh, over 4,000 users during a peak day. Uh, up towards 10,000 users in a given month and over 60 different courses using this main data hub uh, during the fall semester. So this is, you know, I'm not the engineer, I'm like the public facing person, but there's a lot about uh, the Kubernetes here that's making this elastic and scale and us to be able to handle a burst to 5,000 users in the middle of a busy day in the middle of the semester that that's some kind of the magic of the cloud, right? Is like, it's this elastic scaling, adding pods dynamically um, and distributing loads across pods. Uh, you could learn a lot from studying this graph. You can see when students are, you know, when classes aren't running, when students do, do and don't do homework. I'll get to another graph that, that will look more at that in a little bit. But how does the deployment run? 
So there are some hubs that are dedicated to the big core classes. In our undergraduate major, um, so data eight is the single biggest class, and that's what this Jupyter Hub was originally deployed for five years ago. It's now running at about 1,500 students each semester and about 500 students in the summer. So we have you know, thousands and thousands of students every year going through this intro class, and they're all introduced on day one to this elastic deployment on the cloud. The next big class, like the big gateway class, Data 100, 1,000 students a semester, are a machine learning class, Data 102, 300 students, the probability class, 300 students. Another big class is the first EECS class, uh, environmental, uh, sorry, electrical engineering and computer science, that has 1,500 students on it. One thing to note as well in the past couple of years is uh, the cloud works really well and really resilient for remote learning. So there was a lot about these classes here that was able to quickly pivot to online and everybody's like still doing their work and still doing their homeworks and still doing their office hours, you know, uh, because it's all in the cloud. We have some other big deployments. We have an R hub. We really want to engage with our R users. We have a bunch of classes that are teaching on the R hub, public health. They get their own hub because there's a lot of power users there on, amongst the faculty. The iSchools are master's program. They do online teaching. Uh, they have their own hub as well. We have a genetics genomics hub. That's an interesting one. The users there get a lot more than one gigabyte per user and they get you know, more compute and they have some giant data sets. One thing that I have learned in this job is that genomics is the biggest user of data that I know. Um, like each individual's file server, you know, in the genomics hub dwarfs what like, you know, an entire class would use. Uh, there's a hub for Julia. So that's like, you know, we're constantly experimenting with other, you know, other approaches. So we have just a couple of classes using Julia. And then we do have a MOOC and the MOOC has had up to 40,000 users. So those aren't UC Berkeley per people. So this is the idea of like, what's it like to build a hub that's integrated with like an off-campus LMS and deliver, um, you know, this small amount of compute to any person. So it's a free MOOC too. So there's some paid and there's some unpaid. So like anyone off the street can come in and try out data eight uh, in this way. Couple of conception, conceptual slides. So the idea that we're trying to do here is make people comfortable with coding, not people who have signed up for a CS class necessarily. Having everyone have a consistent environment has an equity angle. You could have the latest laptop or you could have a Chromebook from the library and you have equal access um, and have very low requirements. Like there's no first day install problem. There's also many different majors in the class learning together. So these are a lot of the things that, you know, are sort of like part of why we're making data science inclusive and having a data hub is part of facilitating this. You know, this is fitting into a whole network of open science tools. We're meeting students where they are at the university. Once we have this ability to deliver notebooks to anybody, we have a whole set of open science and open source tools. So we can meet social science students, we can meet biology students, we can meet physics students, we can meet earthquake students. This open source stack can sort of fit together and deliver for a lot of different people. And then conceptually also this idea of like, you're getting people to do computational thinking as the same time as you're doing inferential thinking. Across the university, people have to take some sort of stats class for dozens and dozens of majors, but getting people to touch code and use code while they're meeting their stats requirement, that's some sort of integration of things. And what I say is, you know, this is, I'm calling this notebook-based instruction. That's what I promote to people. I'm like, use the data hub for your class. How could you evolve your class to use notebooks? Here's just a fun graph of looking at data 100, number of users with the syllabus mapped on it in black dots. I don't know if this is too small for you to see, but the black dots are when things are due. So you can see how it's like elastically scaling up for when things are due. And uh, you know, there's different granularities, but you can really zoom in and you can like, do the 24 hour view and you figure out that students are actively computing like three, four in the morning, but they're actively sleeping at seven or eight in the morning. Um, so that one's, that one's kind of fun. Another big part of my job that I love is working with other types of teachers. So I go across the campus sort of evangelizing the data hub. Uh, we've served over 80 different classes that are outside of CS and stats, economics, ethnic studies, sociology, biology. Uh, we're building all sorts of notebooks for these instructors and going across the campus. 
Uh, one thing that's, this is a slide, like I can't take credit for this slide, but I love this slide. So these are social science methods course. I'm an economist. So we have been working with a whole range of other classes that have, you know, have to teach their students statistics for their major. And uh, you can see with the numbers, they're like 300, 230, 450, 120, like all sorts of different size of classes. And we're slowly introducing this notebook-based instruction in different ways and different deployments. It's up to the instructor, but they can use this uh, ubiquitous cloud um, really easily to like, you know, just plop it into their class whenever they feel comfortable. I wanna use this to segue to Ksenia who's here. Uh, Ksenia was a graduate student assistant for PolySci 3 when it was converted to being taught in the cloud in R. Ksenia, are you here? Yes, hi. Um, hello, my name is Ksenia and I hope my Wi-Fi doesn't die on me. Um, as Eric said, I did teach um, GSI for Political Science 3. It's an introduction to um, it's kind of the quantitative methods class for uh, political science students. All of them must take it as part of their program. And just to mention, um, most of the students come into Berkeley to major in political science thinking that they will never take any math or CS classes. So they're already kind of bummed at the idea that they'll have to learn some data science as part of their program. So we're trying to make it as, um, um, low key and easy on them as possible. Um, so that's where hub kind of becomes centralized hub becomes very useful. They just click on the link. They don't need to go through any installations. Um, and they just, again, click on the link for the homeworks for the labs. Um, they submit the notebook at the end. And um, that's how, how the workflow is going. They you want also, to talk a little about community colleges as well? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, um, we also help out community colleges. A big, a big part of my job is to actually work with other campuses that want to teach data science. Um, a big focus of that is community colleges, California community colleges. We help them um, create their own Jupyter Hubs. Well, not create their own Jupyter Hubs. We have a point person at UC Berkeley that helps them um, run their own Jupyter Hub for their class, data science class. And we have worked with Howard, CCSF, El Camino, Skyline, and other community colleges. We constantly add more and more students, more and more campuses. Um, their classes are usually very small. Um, they rarely go beyond 50 people a semester. Um, so it's pretty easy to run. Um, we do do walkthroughs for those professors so they know how to troubleshoot in case they need some immediate help. But we also have a point person, as I said, who can help them out in the background. And that kind of helped us scale up this program, um, the data science program into community colleges because a big problem they have is that um, they don't have a lot of finances to run their own hub. Awesome, thank you. Hey, Eric, can you talk about the California Alliance and the work you're doing there? Yeah, so Ksenia was just talking that, about that a little bit. So um, uh, this working with California Community College is part of our, our California Alliance work. But uh, the idea is, you know, this idea of teaching data science at the undergraduate level is really quite new. And so there's only a few UCs teaching it. We have pretty strong partnerships with Santa Barbara and San Diego. Uh, and then we're like reaching to... Um, the uh, CSUs, connecting with uh, faculty at CSUs that are excited about data science, and then meeting and reaching out to faculty at the community college level who are interested in teaching data science. Uh, you know, where this is going to go in the next year or so is like, does there a data science flavor of an intro stats class where like tons and tons of majors need you to take an intro stats class at community college? Will we make the possibility of taking a data eight style class at community college, just, which just opens up a whole bunch of more possibilities for those community college students. And then can we set up an associate's degree for transfer? So if you want to do like chemistry or physics or math, there's a degree plan for you to transfer to those majors. The data science degree at UC Berkeley is now the third or fourth biggest major at UC Berkeley, but there's not a clear associates for transfer. So that's something that we'll be working on sort of like mapping, getting stakeholders, getting people to uh, participate with. Um, so that will be uh, something we'll work on in the future. 
Wait, Ben Windham is here. He's the UCLA Data Hub guy. Uh, I see a question in the chat from Ben. How many people support the operation of all the UCB Jupiter hubs? What's the cost to support the UCB Jupiter hubs? And is that supported as a whole by the university, by the departments each quarter who use it or other? So we don't have like a charge back chart string thing at the moment. It's run as a collaboration between what we are, uh, our division of computing data science and society and data science undergraduate studies. So we put, uh, you know, my effort, half of the outreach person, um, and, and, you know, some share of the engineer's time. And then we share that with the central campus research, teaching and learning who pays some share of like the system administrator person and will be hopefully adding capacity there too. So right now it's sort of a shared project between data science and central campus. Um, you know, uh, what does it cost? Uh, that's always a tough thing that everybody wants to know. I think, you know, I can't really like map out everyone's salary and percentage times. I will give the round number that the number of users that I've shown to you, we spend about $10,000 a month on GCP. Um, and right now that's paid for by CDSS. Um, probably we'll be thinking about how to move that to central campus over time. Thanks for being here, Ben. But that was timely that Ben chimed in because he's potentially a California Alliance partner. If these UCLA, we have uh, Rob Gould from the stats department who participates sometimes. Yeah, I'd be happy to talk about that. I'm always excited to work on these Jupiter Hub projects. Cool, yeah, you came to our workshop one time. Oh, yes, mm -hmm. and if anybody's interested in any of this stuff, we do a lot of outreach. If you know anybody in the education space who's interested, uh, we regularly, um, every June, have a workshop about teaching data science. Ksenia, maybe you can throw the link in the chat. Uh, National Workshop on Data Science Education is coming up in a month, and uh, we'd love to have you. Ben Windham was on a panel, I think, a couple of years ago on uh, talking about the UCLA deployment. Is Jeff Williams asking me about Colab? Why, what about Colab? I think is a general question that people say all the time. So I just want to touch on that. Um, Colab is awesome. I highly recommend it. Um, we promote the use, like, you know, we have multi, so Ksenia and I promote the sort of like, there's this base curriculum data eight and we promote, like we have multiple people who teach data eight using Colab at other places. Um, it's a little hard to sum it up, but having this like giant scale uh, Jupiter hub for everyone on campus has a bunch of efficiencies and is, works uh, in a bunch of ways smoother than having every individual class and every individual person use Colab. Um, Colab is a great, uh, you know, place for somebody like in a smaller class um, at a smaller campus to get online quickly. Um, but, you know, when you're teaching a 1500 person or a thousand person class, there's like a degree of customization and smoothness that comes with a dedicated hub that's like, you know, optimized for your class. I think that's the end of our presentation. I don't know where this goes. A happy to keep chatting. I don't know if you guys had questions for the UCSF folks. Yeah, uh, Andy, do you have any additional comments on the, from the GCP side regarding all these great presentations? I just wanted to again re uh, reiterate my uh, my appreciation to the to the folks that presented. It was great. Looks like uh, Dr. Souza was in the chat window addressing the questions. Jeffrey, I just want to make sure you got your questions on the UCSF presentation and uh, uh, the Berkeley presentation. I think both of your questions were answered. Awesome. Amy and Bill, do you guys have any Thank other you. comments? All right. No, just really appreciating uh, these amazing talks today and uh, for you all for coming. Awesome. I guess that's a wrap. Thanks for having us. Appreciate everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. See you next month. <laughs>